Hey guys, welcome back. By popular demand, I'm branching out into Halo Wars. I reinstalled Halo Wars 2, I have played it before, and I was taking a look at some of the vehicles, and a particular one that people have been asking about was the Vulture. And so that's what we're going to start off with. It's a heavy hitting, massive gunship, and it brings a lot of firepower to bear on the enemy. But what's the real world inspiration behind it? And in the expanded lore, there's actually some surprising lineage, and that's what we're going to talk about today. The Vulture, also known as AC-220, is crewed by one pilot, one co-pilot, and four systems operators. It's 115 feet long, 69 feet wide, 33 feet tall, and it weighs 400,000 pounds. Its armament includes four 20mm GAU-23 Alpha cannons, two Alpha-74 Silver VLS pods, two Argent-5 missile launchers. Its role as a gunship in the Halo Wars universe, it was originally kind of like a power unit. And then Halo Wars 2 became a line unit that you could build. It deploys straight from the Spirit of Fire. It's slow, a little bit less maneuverable, but has the capability to engage an entire spectrum of threats. Because of its size and speed, it is helpful to provide it with escorts because on its own, it can get kind of caught out there. In the modern lore, like in the current Halo Encyclopedia, is just referred to as a gunship, which is honestly just a rather broad term. However, in the past, if you look at an archive of Halo Waypoint, it was actually listed as a direct descendant of modern gunships in the United States. And when I say modern gunships, this isn't just a broad term. There's actually a specific family of aircraft, including the AC-47, the AC-119, AC-130s, the fictional AC-163. While some of the details about the Vulture, its armament, its loadout, its defensive capabilities have changed as the Halo games have progressed, some of it has remained the same. But building off of those previous gunships, there's actually real world history there. All of them minus the AC-163 or actual aircraft that had specific missions and a relatively storied history. Gunships in this manner refers to a specific line of special operations support aircraft dating all the way back to Vietnam. The AC-47 Delta was introduced in 1965. It was a World War II cargo plane modified to carry miniguns. It was crewed by seven, a pilot, co-pilot, navigator, flight engineer, loadmaster, and two gunners. It had three 7.62 millimeter GAU-2 miniguns. It actually worked pretty well. It was known for its capability to circle a target, never having to bring the guns off. It can continuously fire the entire way around. Because of this, the Air Force looked into follow-on programs because the AC-47 was very vulnerable. It flew very low, and C-47s were old planes by that point. So they came out with the AC-119 Golf, and later the Kilo version. It was introduced in 1968. It was crewed by eight with an extra gunner. It featured four of the GAU-2 miniguns, and the Kilo variant added two M61 20mm Gatling cannons to kind of improve the firepower. In parallel to the AC-119 Stinger and Shadow respectively being unveiled, the AC-130 Alpha Spectre was undergoing its first designs. It was actually introduced a little bit before the Stinger in 1967. These first A variants eventually were modified with better engines and became the E variant, still known as Spectre. Later on, they'd be modified into H models. It wasn't until the AC-130U that came out in the 1980s did you hear go by another nickname, Spooky, which was a callback to the original AC-47 nickname. Later in the mid-2010s, you had AC-130 Whiskey, which called back to the AC-119s went by the name of Stinger. And then in the late 2010s, the AC-130 Juliet, which is nicknamed the Ghost Rider, was introduced and began operational combat flying. And so you can see the AC-130, although it's gone through many model variants, is actually still flying today, despite being first unveiled in 1967. Which is not to say that the planes themselves are old, they're still building new ones, it's just a mission set has been persistent and it's need for the US Air Force. Seeing as how the AC-130 is the most recent variant of gunship around, it's probably the most comparable to the Vulture. It's 97 feet long, 132 feet wide, and 38 feet tall, 155,000 pounds. The crew, which was once as large as 14, has shrank all the way down to seven. You have a pilot, a co-pilot, two systems operators, and three gunners. The armament on AC-130s has shifted a lot. Those first variants had the 7.62 and 20mm Gatling guns, as well as 40mm Bofors, what were anti-aircraft guns turned into air to surface. And then the surprise package variant of the AC-130 Alpha is when they first introduced the 105mm. As it progressed into the H models and the U model, that armament, for the most part, stayed the same. The U model, which you see in Call of Duty 4, the one that most are familiar with, had a 25mm Gatling cannon. 
a 40 millimeter Beaufort's cannon, and then the 105. It wasn't until the Whiskey and Juliet models, you saw all those cannons kind of come off, reducing it to just two guns, a 30 millimeter, ironically, a Gal 23 Alpha, which really makes you think where, you know, Ensemble Studios may have gone that nomenclature for the 20 millimeter gun that was on the Vulture, as well as the M137 Alpha 1 105 millimeter howitzer. While the, the Juliet model has less guns, it does make up for carrying a surprisingly large amount of missiles and bombs. It carries 10 common launch tube munitions, which vary from different types, but for the most part just missiles, four GBU-39, which is a small diameter bomb, and then four AGM-114, which is Hellfires, an air-to-surface missile. So that's the history behind the Vulture, but is it a realistic successor to that mission set? Well, right off the bat, there's one thing that's incredibly unrealistic, and that's that the Vulture needs a new name. Clearly, if it wants to be a gunship, it needs to enjoy the proud history and tradition of overusing themes for 60 plus years. Maybe instead of being a Vulture, it could be a Phantom or a Shade, which I know that's what the Covenant vehicles are nicknamed, but in that case, maybe try a different language. You could call it something like Geist. You know, I've been playing a lot of Phasmophobia and believe there's a lot of ghost names out there. When we talk about crew complement, the Vulture is pretty much very similar to modern gunships. It's relatively the same. When you look at armament, it's comparable and different, and maybe in some ways that you might not expect. Modern gunships use significantly less guns than you see on the Vulture, but they have a lot more listed bombs and missiles. Gameplay wise, you know, the Vulture isn't limited. They say that they can reload the vertical launch system. You know, there's no ammo count. But just based off the numbers, modern gunships surprisingly carry a pretty significant amount of missile and bomb payload more than just the guns and ammo they have. That said, the guns on the Vulture, I mean, they're full of turrets, not fixed to the side like current day gunships, which you might think, well, that's probably super sci-fi, not realistic. But actually, and this really surprised me, I found this some time ago and it's super interesting, Boeing actually patented a design for the B-1 for its bomb bay to open up and to have guns on turn assemblies drop down so that the B-1, the Bone, or Lancer, its official term, would be able to engage targets from all directions. Though I have to imagine the air handling characteristics of having a belly mounted gun like that would be very unique, let's just say. When it comes to the design of the Vulture, there's really not much there for me to say. I mean, it, it is shaped like an ergonomic brick. It's slow, which, I mean, so are C-130s. It's a little bit larger than modern gunships, but really only slightly, but it is considerably heavier, weighing almost three times as much. But when it comes to being an aircraft, I mean, it's powered by the same magic as other UNSC vessels. It has, you know, big lift fans. It has stubby small wings, which at that point, honestly, might as well just take them off. They're probably not generating any lift. But I won't belabor the point too much because I feel like everyone, if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I've gone in at length to talk about the aerodynamics of some of the UNSC's designs. Now, but overall, though, I feel like, you know, gunships have a long and proud history in the United States, particularly in the Air Force. It's also kind of a cult hit because of college duty and transformers i feel like most people particularly around my age and many of y'all's ages have played call of duty 4 and have enjoyed that mission the vulture is a worthy successor it boasts a lot of offensive prowess it's a really heavy hitter in the halo wars games plus it also lacks the mobility and flying characteristics which hey that's gunships in a nutshell i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you like content like this please subscribe to the channel i love doing stuff like this and every week i try to put out a new one breaking down introducing some real world topics into the halo games hope everyone has a fantastic christmas break happy holidays and take care